Welcome to Simplest Radical Form, Square Root Edition. I'm Mr. Pi the Math Guy, and I'm your host today. And I'm using this in my land-based classes as a, an algebra review before we start to work with special proportions formed inside of right triangles. So you could be using this as an algebra student or a geometry student. So let's get this party started. As you can see, I have a list of squares here, ranging from 1 squared all the way up to 25 squared. And the reason I have those up there is mainly so you can see what they are. You should probably know most of these, and if you don't, you should take away from this geometry video lesson. Memorize your squares from 1 to 25, because these numbers are pretty important when you start doing geometric means, as you're going to do in your next geometry lesson. But anyway, this lesson is about simplest radical form. So if we took the square root of 400, if you had that memorized, you would know that that would be equal to 20 very quickly without having to reach for a calculator, without even really to have to think about it. And this lesson, if we had a number, say, like the square root of 24, give you a little preview of what's going to happen in this lesson, what we want to do is factor this down, and we want to factor it into numbers that we can take the square root of. In this case, we could factor this down, and this may look familiar to a factor tree, into the square root of 4 and the square root of 6. The square root of 4 times the square root of 6 does give the square root of 24. Now the square root of 4, we can take that. The square root of 4 is 2, and that is times the square root of 6. And the reason we can't do anything with that square root of 6 is because it does not factor into a perfect square number, nor can we take the square root of 6 because it's not a perfect square number. Now there's a word I just use, a perfect square number. And the reason I write this down, it's pretty important for you to understand what they are. The perfect square numbers are the numbers on the right here. When you square the number, like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, all the way up through 529, 576, 625. Those are perfect square numbers because you can take the square root of them without getting a decimal. So that's going to be important as we move along in this lesson on simplest radical form. Here we're going to talk about simplest radical form, and there are two conditions to simplest radical form, and those conditions are that there are no square roots of perfect square factors, and condition number two is no square roots in the denominator. Since this is the square root addition, uh, we're going to focus in on, instead of using radicals, we're just going to be focused in on square roots. And here in this example, this one really illustrates condition number one no square roots of perfect square factors. Well, we can't take the square root of 75. 75 isn't one of those perfect square numbers, but we can factor it into, or break it down into two numbers, two factors, if you will, two numbers that multiply together to give the product. In this case, we can break 75 down into the square root of 25 and the square root of 3. Since we're using a factor tree, we don't necessarily have to use multiplication in there. Next, what we can do is take the square root of 25, that's our perfect square factor. The square root of 25 is 5. And since we can't take the square root of 3 and we can't break it down into a perfect square number, we just write that down as 5 square roots of 3, or 5 times the square root of 3. In this second example, it illustrates the no square roots in the denominator rule. In this case, we have the square root of 6 over the square root of 5. We're not allowed to have a square root in the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique called rationalizing the denominator. We're going to rationalize the denominator. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a key skill here and that's what we're going to be doing. And to rationalize the denominator, we're going to multiply by the fraction the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. Now that's equivalent to 1, so we're not changing the value, we're just going to change the way it looks. And so when we multiply here, we multiply the numerator, so square root of 6 times square root of 5, that will give us the square root of 30. You can just multiply those, that's a rule. And down here, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, well that gives us the square root of 25. And thus we've rationalized, or got the square root out of the denominator, and we have the square root of 30 over 5. So there's a couple little examples on 
simplest radical form and the rules that we need to adhere to. Remember, to simplify a radical, you want to think about the perfect square numbers. Well, we talked about that in a previous slide. Here's a couple more examples to illustrate the first rule, that there should be no perfect square factors underneath the square root. Now, there's a couple ways to factor 50, or 150, I should say. So when I break it down, you could break it down to 75 times the square root of 2, or the square root of 75 times the square root of 2, and breaking 75 down, we saw that in a previous example, it'd break down into the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. So what we have here is we have three factors, and the square root of 25 is, in fact, 5. We could write that down with an extra step in here if you wanted to, so you can see where we get the final answer. So it'd be 5 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 2. We would just multiply these together, that would give us 5 times the square root of 6. So one square root of 150 in simplest radical form would be 5 square roots of 6. Over here, we have 108. 108 breaks down a couple different ways. One way it breaks down would be the square root of 9 and times the square root of 12. Now we know the square root of 9 is 3, but the square root of 12, that can break down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And I said 4 here, and I wrote a 3, so it should be the square root of 4 there. Square root of 4 and a square root of 3. And of course, the square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 4, which is 2. And we can't take the square root of 3, so to put this even more simpler terms, 3 times 2 is 6, and that'd be 6 square roots of 3. So there's a couple more examples on simplest radical form. Here in example one, we're going to multiply and divide radicals. And the reason we're going to do that is to review what to do when you have to multiply two square roots. And in this case, we're given part A and part B. In part A, we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 8. Now, the thing you need to take away from here is that we could factor these first and do a lot of work, or we could just multiply them out and see what happens. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 8, when we multiply that, we just go 2 times 8 and put that underneath the square root. And of course, we know that the square root of 16 is 4. So to simplify this expression, the square root of 2 times the square root of 8, it ultimately becomes 4. This example here, pretty easy. It's the square root of 294 divided by the square root of 3. In essence, what we do is we're going to take 294 and divide it by 3 and put that answer underneath the square root. So if we take 294 and we divide that by 3, 3 goes into 29 9 times, and that would give us 27. And we subtract, not 29 take away 27 is 2. We bring down the 4. 3 goes into 24 8 times. So that would give us the square root of 98. And from there, we would try to factor that and see if we could put that in simplest radical forms. And off the top of my head, I don't see any square root factor. So I know this number is even. So I'm going to just use a divisibility rule here and give me the square root of 2. And then 2 goes into 9 4 times. So that would be 4. And that'd be one left over. And no, in fact, it does. It's the square root of 2 and the square root of 49. So I know I can take the square root of 49, which gives me 7, and the square root of 2. So that would be 7 square roots of 2 in simplest radical form. Example 2, we're going to be simplifying radical fractions. In this case, we're going to write the square root of 4 thirds in simplest form. And to do that, we're going to rationalize the denominator. You saw me do that a little earlier in this video. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write this as the square root of 4 over the square root of 3. Now, you should know that we're able to take the square root of 4, which gives us 2, over the square root of 3. Now, we have to get rid of that square root of 3. And here comes that step, or that special thing I told you about earlier. Here's where we're going to rationalize the denominator. We're going to get rid of that square root in the denominator. And as I did earlier, we're going to multiply this by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. 
by multiplying by the square root of 3 over square root of 3, it's like multiplying by 1. We're not changing the value, we're just changing the way it looks. Now the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives us the square root of 9. And in time, you should be able to just write that down as the final answer. And this would give us two square roots of 3. And our final answer here is going to be two square roots of 3 over 3. And that's what I meant from here to here without writing that down as the square root of 9. You just should be able to, in time, write that down as 2 square root of 3 over 3 once you see that showing your work here. So this is in simplest radical form. I know it doesn't look too simple, but it is.